How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So, how often have you guys gone to get a 3D print, you've sliced it, you've sent it to the printer, and then you've come back maybe a few hours later to find... well... this. To be honest, this has happened to me many times in the past, and often it's something that can be prevented if I was a little bit more careful in checking my sliced files before sending them to the printer. So, G-Code Preview used to be something that was quite difficult to do for a very long time. Often you'd have to just slice, and then pray that your file would print correctly, or you had a bit of a sort of rudimentary approach to being able to see G-Code without really understanding, or being able to visually understand speeds, or what material was support, what was infill, that kind of thing. But then Simplify 3D came along with its extremely powerful preview mode for previewing your G-Code before you can commit it to your printer. And that's what we're going to use today to verify our files and to prepare a really difficult to print 3D print and make sure it's going to work first time without wasting any plastic or time on our 3D printer. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, so here we are within Simplify 3D and I'm going to go to import and bring in this file here. Birthday puppy. So if you're on my Patreon list, you would have seen this file I designed for my sister's birthday. It is a death claw head on the body of a puppy I designed in Mesh Mixer. Pretty funny, but this is the file. So here we go. First things we can notice, it's tiny, that's not good, and it seems to be in a weird orientation. So let's fix that first. So let's zoom in and let's click the file, double click. So scaling, it's obviously tiny. So let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger than that. Uh, let's just scale it. Something so I can actually manipulate it, I guess. There we go. So that's the, the death claw puppy on the, the head on the body. Uh, so let's make it properly orientated. So let's go to edit and place surface on bed. Select the base. And that's a lot more like it. Center and arrange. So now we have a sort of good idea of what it's going to look like. We can work out our scale. So I want to print it not too large because I don't want it to take too long. Maybe 100 high. There we go. Make sure it's nice and centered and I'm good to go. So here's the file. And this is an extremely difficult 3D printing file. There's a few reasons why. One of them are these horns. These horns have sharp underside curves, which means that support material generation automatically might not detect it. There's also this tongue here, very thin, and this underside sort of dog tag thing, which is also extremely difficult to be supported. We've also got some overhangs here in terms of the sort of spike at the back and we've got the overhang of the mouth. So overall, this is a difficult file to 3D print and if I was just to commit this to a slicer which was just slice and go like an up printer, I know for a fact that the ups cannot handle sharp underside curves, they just don't generate support for them. So I know for a fact this would fail. And what's worse is it's not going to fail at the start, it'll fail as it gets to the end of the print which is like several hours in. So let's prevent that. So let's go to our process. So I'm going to be printing this on the CraftBot Plus. So I've already got that selected, which is awesome. And I'm going to print in PLA. Fantastic. Layers, 0.2 is good. And here we've got some uh, settings for the, the layers, how many, how many layers there is on the outside of the, the part. So I've got four of perimeters and four top and bottom. So that's quite a heavy amount of a shell around the file. But you'll see when I do the preview, that having more is usually generally better than having less in terms of a good surface finish. And let's go to support. So if we were going to do automatic support generation, let's do support pillar resolution of two. It's usually default to four, by the way, so make sure you um, keep note of that. And let's make a max overhang, yeah, 75. So 15 degrees will be supported. So let's try prepare to print and see what happens. So here we have the Simplify 3D preview mode. And before I jump into what I want to change on my model, let's have a look at how this preview mode works and how you can use it to better fine tune your 3D prints before actually committing them to your 3D printer. So on the left hand side, we've got various different preview modes. So if we look through coloring, we can choose between movement speed, which is very handy if you're trying to fine tune your print speeds when it comes to fine details. For example, you can see here the horns, the printer will visibly slow down, which means you'll get a better surface finish. We can also look at active tool head, which is very handy if you're using a dual extruder 3D printer because it will show each extruder as a different color. For example, as supports, you could assign them to a different extruder and they'll show up in a different color. 
But what I tend to use most is feature type. So feature type will show all these different feature aspects of your 3D print as different colors. For example, the raft is purple, the supports are gray, and the main model itself on the outside perimeter is blue. But how do we look at the internals and the layer by layer aspect of this 3D print? Well, at the bottom of the screen, we can scroll all the way back through the model. And by using this slider, we can go through each layer one at a time to work out exactly how the model is going to be formed. What can also be extremely handy is to view the model just by a single layer. And we can do this by selecting layer and then single layer only. And by doing this, we can go through the model layer by layer without seeing the previous layer. So you can see how the support crosses over itself at 90 degrees by viewing each layer independently, which can be very handy to troubleshoot and fine tune very complicated STL files. And a feature I tend to use a lot in my videos is the play function. So we can actually scroll through the layers layer by layer or line by line using this function and we can change the speed. So for example, that would be very fast, but we can actually slow it right down like this to show how the model would form line by line. And we can change the speed depending on how we want to check it out. This is an extremely satisfying and powerful feature within the preview mode of Simplify 3D. And it's a great way of checking your model. It also looks really good when I use it in videos. Something I also really appreciate being able to see is travel moves. So if you're getting stringing between your model, this is a good way to diagnose it. So for example here, if string was an issue, that's where the strings would form without a doubt. And because we can see these in the G-code preview, we can try to fine tune where our models are placed to minimize where this stringing could occur, or even better, try to make the stringing not occur at all by making travel moves within the model. And there is actually a mode for that within Simplify 3D's advanced tab called Avoid Crossing Outline for Travel Movements. All right, so this is Simplify 3D's uh, sort of automatic generation of support and slicing of this file. So let's scroll the layers right back to the start. So I've got a raft here, which is, I find useful for when support material is generated. If it's straight onto the build platform, usually I find a raft helps it stay in place. So the support generation has detected that overhang for the dog tag, which is what's there. See, it starts forming that little tag there, which is awesome, so that'll work good. All right, and we've got support for the the formation of the, the head, I suppose. There we go, that's not good. So you can see there, guys, as, as I go a little bit higher, and on the other side, the horns start forming in mid-air. And if I had committed this to the 3D printer, the printer would print them in thin air, which is completely useless, because then it's gonna fail horribly. So you can see they start forming, and there's just, there's nothing there, it is in midair. So this isn't suitable for printing. If I had sent that G-code to the printer, the print would have failed. So let's go to tools and customize support structures to create our own manual supports. Right, so max overhang, let's go to the support resolution of two and generate automatic supports. So with a support pillar resolution, you can change that and you can have multiple resolutions in the same file. So in terms of my manual supports I add in, I'm going to make them four because they're more blocky and easier to position in my opinion. What we want to do is take a note looking from the underside of the model where things are overhanging and as I said, underside sharp curves are notorious to be ignored by automatic support generation. So we need to add support there. And to be honest, more is usually better than less, especially in this circumstance. So let's go to add new support structures. And I can literally just go click. Intersections are totally cool in terms of the support beams touching each other. Actually, that's what you want, to be honest. So that's pretty good. So that's a nice thick support structure. And on this side as well, why not? Let's just add them all in. All up through here. Why not? Let's have them nice and thick to be fully supported because that's what you want. It's better spending a little bit more time here than having a print fail. And in terms of support structures that we don't want, we can then go in and remove them. So for example, this one here doesn't really have any purpose. It might be supporting something tiny that actually won't happen. So that's fine. Uh, this one here as well doesn't really need to be there. So looking at the bottom of the model, you can see where support's gonna be. So I can see I might wanna add a bit more supports for that dog tag. So I'm just gonna add new support structures and just chunk those, <laughs> they're so chunky, but that should work really well. Awesome, all right, I'm really happy with that, done. Sorted, okay, so let's go back to preview and see how it looks. Sweet, okay, 
So let's scroll all the way back down. So when I mentioned multiple layers of uh, multiple shells in the file, this is what I meant. So these sort of areas here, if you don't have enough, like if you only have two uh, shells on your model, for example, then often these can lead to holes because you see here, it's changing quite a lot in a very small amount of area. And if you don't have enough layers, so here I've got, see this goes, goes down the perimeter four times. If you only went around twice, you're probably gonna end up with a hole there. And this sort of makes it nice and easy to see using the G-code preview. Anyway, let's keep going up and have a look. That's what we wanted to see. So you can see here on both sides that it forms the, the dense support and then it starts forming those sharp overhangs. And they weren't detected before, but because we made it ourselves, it works. You can tweak this to your heart's content, guys. You can tweak every setting you can see what the build time estimate's gonna be. So this is a five hour print, which is fair enough. I'm not printing too fast. It's gonna use 74, 75 grams of plastic. And you can see where the support's gonna be. So another thing this is handy for is working out if supports will be able to be removed after the print's complete. If you've got a lattice structure, like a sphere with holes and you have support in that sphere, you're not gonna be able to remove it easily. So that's something also you can see in the preview mode. Because as I said, if I sent this to the printer before without doing a preview, then yeah, it would have failed 100% that the horns wouldn't have printed and it would have been like, oh, sorry to my sister, you, your birthday present failed horribly. But because I could do preview, I could check that, then I can make sure it worked perfectly. So I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and let's send it to the printer and see if it works. So here you can see guys, it's printing really well. I love the time lapse you can get off the CraftBot Plus because the bed doesn't move, it just drops down. And I chose to print in a fake metallic copper PLA. So it's not real copper, it just looks like copper. And it came out really well. And here's the support structures that I'm breaking away. And you can see that the raft was a bit hard to remove, not really anyone's fault. It's just the material maybe was a bit too old or a bit too hot when I was printing it but the support structures themselves just break away by hand. It's such a satisfying experience when supports break away like that. It's so awesome. I didn't have to do any post-processing or cleaning up. It just looked great straight off the printer. And she was super happy with it, let me tell you. So yeah, despite this print being extremely difficult for an FDM 3D printer, especially with the custom supports, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Even the tongue worked, which is awesome. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this video on G-Code Preview useful. I mean, in terms of testing your models before you commit them to the 3D printer, it's a fantastic way of saving yourself time, money and just pain. Coming back to a failed print is horrible at the best of times, but if your print had no chance to start with because your G-Code wasn't good enough, then that's the worst. So let me know in the comments guys if you've managed to save a 50 hour print or something using G-Code Preview or what sort of disasters you've had in terms of not verifying G-Code. I'd love to hear your stories. And let me know in the comments also what sort of future videos you'd like to see, especially in terms of slicing and that kind of thing, or simplify 3D tutorials. Let me know and uh, I'll put it away in the old, in the old list to, to bring you in future. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly guys, here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, bye.